Hi, my name is Whitney Laird. I am the Director of Financial Aid and Veteran Services here at Henderson Community College. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about financial aid and hopefully answer some of your burning financial aid questions. Uh, first and foremost, the most important thing that every student needs to complete is the FAFSA. And that's F-A-F-S-A, -F -F FAFSA. So you would do that once a year. You would need to use your parents' taxes if you are in a dependent student, which would mean you are under the age of 24, you're not married, and then you don't have any children. That would require you to do the FAFSA using your parents' information. If you do meet one of those three criteria, then you do not have to use parent information on the FAFSA. That is one of the biggest questions I get every year and every semester for new students that are not sure if they have to use their parents' information or not. So if you have any other questions on that, feel free to stop by and see me in the Start Center at any time. Another question I get the most about the FAFSA is, what do I do if I'm selected for verification? So one in three students are selected for verification, and in that instance, there will be an item that will show up on your to-do list through your My Path Student Self-Service page. You'll be able to click on that, and it will take you to the verification form, and then also show you any other items that you need to submit to us in order for us to complete verification with you. If you ever need any assistance or anything with that, feel free to contact me or Ariel Boston up in the Start Center and we can help you get those documents submitted. All right, another important thing that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about is SAP. And what that stands for is Satisfactory Academic Progress. And what that means is that we, you have to meet the required 2.0 GPA and the 67% completion rate. So you have to pass at least 67% of all the classes you take. Now, if you're a first semester student, you're not gonna encounter this just yet. But if you have attended here before and you're returning or you're three semesters in, but you had a rough semester, you could already be running into this. So what will happen is if you bomb your first semester, you are automatically going to go into it, what we call a warning status for SAP. And then the next semester, if you do not pass all of your classes, if you can't get that GPA and the completion percentage to meeting the required 2.0 GPA and 67% completion rate, you will go into SAP suspension. Now, going into SAP suspension doesn't automatically knock you out of ever receiving aid again. Uh, we have an appeals process for that that you can complete through the financial aid section of your student self-service page through MyPath and you can appeal your SAP status. So what you would need to do to appeal your SAP status is it gives you an option. Um, you enter your narrative into the first box and you kind of explain your situation and how you're in the situation now. So if it was a medical reason or there was a death in the family, just if there was a significant circumstance in which caused you to fail or drop from all of your classes, that caused you to go into SAP suspension, you're gonna to wanna to give that narrative in great detail so that our committee, when we're reviewing it, we kind of get the full picture of what was going on in your life during that time. And then in the next box, you're going to write something about what steps you're gonna take this semester if your appeal's approved in order to stay on track and keep on track until you graduate. That will give our committee a better look at A, what was going on in your life in the time that you were not doing well in your classes and b what are you going to what has changed and what you're going to do now to be successful in your classes if your appeal is approved we will send you an email communication letting you know that your appeal is approved and we'll also send you something called a plan of action and what that is is it just states um, what program you're in and the conditions that you are going to meet um, sap every semester upon your approved appeal so you're going to pass all of your classes with a 2.0 GPA or higher. You're not going to drop from any classes. Um, there's a few other criteria on there. If you break any of those criteria that you go over in your plan of action upon receiving an approved SAP appeal, you would go back into SAP suspension the following semester. So if your appeal is denied, how that works is, if you receive a communication from us after you've done your appeal that says that it's denied, then you would not be able to receive aid until you have paid out of pocket, until you have reached the 2.0 GPA and 67% completion, basically working yourself out of it. So you would not be eligible for aid again after a denied appeal until you've earned your aid back 
based on the 2.0 GPA and the 67% completion rate criteria. There's also a form of SAP that's called maximum time frame, which if you're early on in your college career, you will not encounter that yet. Um, most students have to be above 90 attempted credit hours before they would go into something called max time frame. So what that means is you could be meeting the 2.0 GPA requirements and the 67% completion rate, but solely just based on the number of credit hours you have, you would have to appeal for that reason. So you would basically just need to state why you have so many attempted hours, um, yet you're meeting the other criteria, and why you're going to continue to be successful in receiving this credential uh, or diploma in order to pass and graduate with us. The FAFSA will also help you determine whether you're going to be grant eligible or if you're going to be loan eligible. So some of our students are grant eligible. They would also be loan eligible because all students are eligible for federal loans, but some students are not grant eligible, which would mean that they are only loan eligible. The FAFSA will determine this, and if you need help interpreting that, once you've submitted your FAFSA, it will give you something called an EFC, and that stands for Estimated Family Contribution. That is what we look at to determine if you are Pell Grant eligible or if you're loan eligible. Now for our students who are loan eligible and they've never received a loan with us before, one of the first steps that you need to do is to go to studentaid.gov and complete the entrance counseling and master promissory note for Henderson Community College. What that does is it basically just states that you've read the terms and conditions of loans, you know how they work, it gives you a couple of exercises to show you how student loans work and then once you've completed that, that information is sent to the college, and at that time you can make a loan request through your student self-service page. I normally suggest students, especially if they're first-time loan borrowers, to only request what you need. Um, you can estimate books um, and things like that in there in addition to your tuition, but not to exceed any amount that you need for just school supplies and tuition and books. Um, the best advice I can give on loans is ask us questions. If you're not sure if you should take a loan or are there additional scholarships or anything you can apply for, come and see us so that we can answer those questions for you first before taking a loan because you may not need to. There may be other options available to you um, in addition to that before requesting a loan. So it's always good to check with the financial aid staff just in case. Now that I've mentioned scholarships, um, our scholarship applications open twice a year on October 1st and then on February 1st. So our October 1st application opens for the spring semester and that's October 1st through November 15th. When you apply for that, it puts you into the pot of eligible students that could possibly receive a spring scholarship. And when you apply for the fall scholarship, you would apply for that during the February 1st through March 15th deadline. And those scholarships are typically fall spring scholarships, so they're split between the fall and spring semester. So if you apply for both and you receive an additional spring scholarship during that fall deadline for the October 1st through November 15th for the spring application, and you've already received an award for the fall of that year that you're currently in, you could receive an additional one in the spring as well, although your loan, your loan, your scholarship splits, you could still receive an additional one for spring. Um, there's also a scholarship called the Work Ready Kentucky Scholarship for students who are Kentucky residents. Um, they're not Pell eligible and they're in an approved program. So most of the programs are approved unless you're in the standard Associates in Arts or Associates in Science program. And if you fall under this category where you don't get Pell um, and you don't wanna make a loan request and you're not sure if you're eligible for that scholarship, just stop by and say something to us. We'll take a look at your account, see what program you're in, take a look at your FAFSA and determine if you qualify and if you need to go ahead and apply for that scholarship because that could get you out of taking loans for that semester.